Hey everyone, I'm Elite Gaming here, and today we're playing Dragonair Silent Gods. For today's video, I'm going to showcase my Pillar of Light push from stage 1 through stage 20. Let's highlight some of those key stages. So this video is going to be from my live stream, pushing my Pillar of Trial. I actually did Pillar of Light and Pillar of Taint to level 20, and the same time it took me to do Pillar of Dark. That one was a struggle. I was surprised at how hard that was for that roster, but hey, I got a pretty strong Pillar of Light team, so that's what we're going to have some fun showcasing today. But before I get into that, I do want to point out that today's video is sponsored by Dragonair Silent Gods, my favorite sponsor. You guys know it's the game I love to play anyway, and I'm enjoying uh, the, the need, I guess, to stream more often. It's kind of fun. I get to hang out with you guys live and push some content. It makes me not be a slacker and get behind like I did last season. But if you haven't checked out Dragonair Silent Gods yet, and you're just browsing the YouTube space, well, make sure you download it via my link in the description or the pinned comment below. It's available on Android, iOS, Mac, PC, Steam, or Epic Games. We are on to Season 2 of the new content. There's so many changes like these synergies for the Pillar of Trial, new elemental affinity lineups, new damage types, and brand new season, a span new game. And well, for this season, Pillar of Light, <laughs> this combo of light and ice is perfect for me. It's what I wanted to play anyway. I wanted to play with Drista Warden. I wanted to, um, yeah, do my frost team. And they introduced Ice Blast, which is perfect for Vortex. So I knew Pillar of Light was going to be my strongest one. And sure enough, I did very well. But this is going to be more just a showcase of what I'm using, what I'm playing with. This is not meant to be a free-to-play guide. This is just simply a showcase of me having fun pushing my Pillar of Light. And you can see how my team synergy comes together. We do talk strategy. I talk about using stun sets on people like Voresh. It just makes sense. And so it's more than just about who the characters are. But yeah, I'm going to go ahead and roll the footage where I show my team show the builds, what they're wearing, uh, and then I go through and I will show you stage 10, stage 19, and stage 20. So I'm going to do the Pillar of Light today with Ice and Radiance. Yesterday we did Pillar of Dark that will be a YouTube video hopefully posted um, today the 9th as of this live stream, if not hopefully the 10th at the latest. Um, but yeah, I it was really, really hard. Uh, it was my most limiting group of heroes because I had just barely b built them and I have nothing in the Psychic Core to help fire a Necrotic. Uh, Poison and Lightning, I have Theraval built as a main DPS for single target stuff, but no other Dauntless people built right now. Although I do have Yola at level 91 and Sigrid, so this probably wouldn't be too bad. Pillar of Tain's probably the easiest because I also would have Ogok and Furboth as support and Vcook and so many good people. Pillar of Light is my best roster because of my crazy Frost and Ice Blast people as it is my main thing I'm pushing for sake of Vortex. So I figured I'd go from, I hope I can go from struggling dramatically to just blasting through. That's going to be the goal is to use my um, Frost team, I guess. Let's see. So my A team, the A team. I call this the A team. This is the team I bring in for all my dungeons. But the difference is I'm going to bring in Voresh for more damage because I don't need Acilia and um, Garius to start off. We could smash more. So I'm actually going to bring in... Actually, no! Yes, I'm going to bring in Ger uh, Voresh as the Witch's Remains hero, and he's going to be in a stun set. I also could be bring in Goom, Goom Gum. He has stun and blind and attack penalty as well, so he would be a great help for this battle. But I should be able to smash 
I'm gonna go with the full board for the most hits possible. And then when it comes down to the boss fights, if I can't do it with Oster and Drist, I probably can't do it with my Ice Blast, but maybe. Maybe the Ice Blast will get me through the boss faster. I don't know, but these are hard. The Radiant boss is really, really hard in the Pillar of Light. And uh, along with that, it's like a boss that heals everybody, you know? Like the Radiant little mobs we, we ca uh, come across in the open world. And you need to prevent them from healing or reviving or whatever. And there's no heal reduction debuffs. That's the reality, too. It's just how limited we are for our heroes. Like, I'm... Let me see. Let's go in. So, ideally, we want heal reduction. But when it comes to ice and radiance and heal reduction... Bruh. Why does it say I have none? Oh, have, that's only if it's both. Okay, one. I have Nessa. Like, that's it. Pargu's random, and Austin is too random as well. He's weird. So that's it. That's it. And she's not good enough to do it on her own. So if you guys are stressed out trying to do Pillar of Light, and you're like, I don't have Nessa. I can't do it without Nessa. Let me just tell you that Nessa doesn't help. She's not the answer. I mean, maybe could she help per se? Maybe. But she doesn't keep healing prohibition up on her own the whole time or not doing it enough cycling through to make it even be worthy. So I'm really bummed that there was no one added to make the Pillar of Light boss a little bit easier. At least another person with healing prohibition that could be on the ultimate that we could properly cycle through easier. But it's hard. Getting through the wave is hard. And then getting through, like, then by the time you get through the waves, you gotta fight the boss, which you have to kill the side ads first. It's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. Alright, so going into the Pillar of Light, we're gonna be, this is gonna be my OP team showcase. We're gonna smash with my Inspiration 5, Drista Warden, hashtag no regrets there. He's a beast. Um, I thought, oh, I like how it showed the little list before it changed it. But yeah, he is fully inspired. He's got a ton of crit, crit damage, attack. He's all right. And I don't worry about accuracy on him. I'm going to have Oster be the applier. He's going to, he's got a better chance to apply Frost in the first place. Plus, it's so easy to build him with lots of damage anyway. I do use the ring on Oster. The Ring of Winter, the exclusive one for Frost, which is really cool. So he's here with accuracy chest, but then crit rate and damage stats all around um, for a inventor set. So Drist is in a gambler, Oster's an inventor, and they're both pretty solid here gear-wise. And then we have Rose as part of my A team as well. Wait, but this is the B team. Only because Voresh instead of a second support tank. But she's going to be our little attack down. Um, attack penalty hero. She'll provide a little extra healing. And then this recharging speed penalty happening more often will be great. Because we'll help to slow down our enemy in the pillar. Which will be thanks to this hourglass. I probably should again throw something a little better on her. But I think I'm just going to leave it. Don't think it's a big deal. I think she's fine. Don't think I need to change her right now. We do have Voresh in this in this team now. He's in a stun set, the Holy Hunter set. So this is the huge part. I feel like the stun sets are so helpful um, to be able to control the enemies a bit more. Control is just awesome for the Pillar of Tri or Famiander or anything like that. So he's a built with a, enough accuracy to land, which is remains plus his debuffs, plus damage, attack, crit rate, and accuracy wherever I could get it. So that's kind of my Voresh build as well. And we have our Garius as our main tank. He's a beast. Um, he is in defense chest, but HP gloves to kind of balance it out. I need to do that for Vortex to make sure he's the one with the most HP. Yeah, he has defense and HP here. A balanced build, not just pure defense. 
Because sometimes the enemies ignore defense. If we go against any Austers, which we will in this pillar, uh, he's going to ignore defense. So you kind of need to survive with some HP too. But he isn't a maxed out gatekeeper. Gatekeeper is huge for Garius. It's been a game changer. And Bambi, you said I had exactly 4,000. Did I real? Oh my gosh, I do. Exactly 4,000 attack on Rose. Rose is gonna smash. Go, Rose. What? Oh, I should get crit rate on her, but then I would take away from her attack. Why not? All right, let's do the thing. We're gonna go crit damage aura for as long as we can. That's gonna be the plan. Crit damage aura all the way. We're gonna smash to the early waves, and then we're gonna see if we have to change things when it gets harder. <laughs> But this should be fairly quick because I've got Auster and Driss stored in with lots of AoE damage. And even Rose is going to bring some AoE damage. So it's like one shot, they're dead. Um, but hey, I was surprised at how hard it got with the other one. So I wouldn't be surprised if I actually do struggle. <laughs> at least on the boss. I'm curious about stage 20. Is it going to be harder than I expect? I don't know. Okay, this is our stage 10. Stage 10 should be pretty easy. The, the mobs are going to be nothing. Now let's just see how the boss is. I really hope my inspired 5 Drist can handle it, right? That's the goal. After the last one being so frustrating, it would be nice to, to have an easy one. BMB in your fancy Gulend. I'm so jealous. That's one of my. That is probably my most wanted hero. Especially given that in season two, Necro and Fire really lack good healing and support, and he can heal and smash at the same time. He's just so good. And he brings important debuffs. Alright, so this boss here we should do really well with. But yeah, he heals the uh, the allies, puts ally protection, and then heals again. So he just pumps out so much healing that you can't just have one person putting up a heal reduction debuff. It's not enough. That's why Nessa's not good enough. <laughs> Nessa is not good enough. But this is only stage 10, so we should have an easy smash. We're obviously having an easy smash, but can I? is 20 going to be that easy? I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> At least with this team, because it is my core team. Yay, we got a Helio Light. Let's go. All right, Pillar of 19 complete. Let's see if our Frosty team is just going to smash through stage 20. <laughs>
All right, so the boss and his evil healing. Can we outsmash the healing? We want to kill the adds first, which we should. With the AOE, yeah, we're going to be fine. Go team, go. This is the goal, so the harder stages, you've got to get rid of those minions first. And then start attacking the boss. And then it goes quick once you start attacking the boss. But the boss keeps healing the minions, making it even harder. Okay, so stage 20, easy clap. Pillar of Light with my best team. But again, that was kind of expected because my Psychic Core is very maxed out for this. Everything I have is focusing... Um, oh, this one. Ice and Radiance Attack. Ice and Radiance Accuracy. Ice and Radiance HP. Five Man Synergy and boom! Five out of five already on day 26 here of the 10% bonus for the elemental affinity damage. So next up is, of course, our getting to 40,000 solvent at once. But to get this 200% bonus cold damage, 300%, 400% attack, oh, that's gonna be bonkers and definitely worth the push. But this is why my not only having OP heroes like Drist and Oster, but this is why it should have been easier, and I hope it'll be easier for the rest of the season. You can see my fire and my necrosis. Fire and necrosis have zero love. So that was expected to be hard for me. And if you haven't already, be sure to download Dragon or Silent Gods now using the link in the description or the pinned comment. It's available on Android, iOS, Mac, PC, Steam, and Epic Games.